All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for those live and also those listening to the recording. Welcome. Uh, so we are in the middle of a series called the Wilderness Mentalities. This is actually part five of this mini series, uh, but it's actually the bigger series we're doing is from Battlefield of the Mind, which is a book from uh, Joyce Meyer that we've been reading chapter by chapter and teaching uh, the messages and lessons from the book. So um, so today uh, we're going to be looking at wilderness mentality number five, which I'm going to share what that is in a, in a second. Uh, but let's start with the verse. Uh, if you look at the screen in James 5, 7, it says, So be patient, brethren, as you wait till the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits expectantly for the precious harvest from the land. See how he keeps up his patient vigil over it until it receives the early and late rain. So I underlined as you wait, because that's a, a something to focus on. Notice how it says as you wait, not if you wait, because waiting is a part of life. It's something that we just can't avoid. We're going to have to wait for a lot of different things in our lives. But for many of us, we just don't know how to wait very well. Now, here's the basic truth. If you look at your uh, notes or the, the slide on your screen, it says in life, we will be waiting more than receiving. So that's the truth of life. We're going to be waiting more than we receive something. Uh, waiting is just, as I said, part of life. It's something that we have to learn how to do. We have to learn to develop a healthy attitude when we're waiting. Um, so here's how the process should look like when it comes to when we're asking God and praying to God. So step one is we ask God for something in prayer with belief that he's going to answer it in his way and his timing. So that's important that we just, we, we don't give up the habit of asking God. Step two is we simply wait. We wait for more, uh, for the, the manifestation. We wait for, for something to arrive. We wait, uh, wait some more if we need to. Fervently pray over that, uh, what we're praying for. And then the third part of it is when it finally arrives in God's timing and God's way, we then rejoice because we finally received what we have been waiting for. Unfortunately, we are human beings, and human beings, just like the Israel were, Israelites were human beings, many of us have this next wilderness mentality, which is wilderness mentality number five. Don't make me wait for anything. I deserve everything immediately. Now, we live in a society where we get things immediate. We get things delivered by the next day through Amazon and the different you know, delivery uh, organizations. Uh, we have instant microwaves, instant popcorn. We have everything instant. Uh, we can buy things instantly through our devices. We can watch videos and play games instantly on our devices. We can now watch pretty much any movie we want instantly on our streaming services. Um, so we don't really have to wait very long. So because of that, our muscles of waiting have gotten very weak. Gillette, uh, okay, she's a Canadian author. She said, impatience can cause wise people to do foolish things. You see, even if we, if the wise struggle with patience, like she's saying in her quote, then it's safe to say that all of us struggle when it comes to patience, which leads us to our message. What to remember when we're impatient. But before we jump into our next seven points that we're going to give you, uh, we have to really identify what we're impatient about. Now, I just wrote some things down here. I didn't put it on the slides, but I'm just going to read them to you. Some of the things that we may become patient, impatient about. Um, one is you're waiting at a doctor's office, right? And it's funny because you wait in the in the lobby and then sometimes you have to wait in another room uh, for like another half hour until the doctor comes. So you're waiting a lot of times for a long time. If you're in the emergency room, if you go to ER, you'll have to wait hours many times to be seen. Um, so, you know, waiting is just inevitable when you're getting seen medically. Um, many of us wait in long lines, whether it be at the gas station or, or not, or at, uh, the grocery store or at Starbucks or some of the different places we have long lines we have to wait in. Um, a friend of mine just mentioned the gas station at Costco. He went to Costco and he was waiting in a long line. There was cars behind him and he was stuck and he was actually ended up being late for work because he was stuck in the long line at Costco. Um, many of us don't want to wait when it comes to relationships. We, we don't want to do it God's way. We're impatient. 
we want to jump into a new relationship or we want to, you know, kind of uh, do what we do in relationships, right, without putting God first. Um, many of us are, are not patient when it comes to our kids, right? Um, or especially when they become teenagers, we, we lose patience even more when they become teenagers sometimes. Some of us are just not patient um, when it comes to somebody not understanding you. Or if you say something to them and we're, the person is not getting it, we tend to not be patient with that person if they're not understanding us the way we want them to um, or agreeing with us the way we want them to. Um, or here's another one. Uh, when somebody closest to you hurts you, right? When we forget that hurt people hurt people and we become impatient with those people. And so we have, sometimes we have family members in our lives that we call them EGRs, extra grace required, right? Or impatient when it comes to them. We just don't like being around them. But regardless of the type of impatience that it is that we struggle with, um, these, you know, it, it usually revolves around one of these seven deadly sins. If you look at your notes in the screen, it says, number one, impatience is the fruit of pride. Now, as much as we hate to admit it, every time we're impatient, we are in that exact moment acting prideful. We may not believe it or not, but it's true. Every time we're upset with the waiter for bringing the wrong order or, or keeping us waiting for a little while, that's pride. Pride is at the center of that. Every time we get angry, at a telemarketer, and trust me, I struggle with telemarketers myself. They always seem to call it the worst time. Every time we get angry at a telemarketer for calling us, that's pride. There's a big difference between righteous anger, which is getting angry about what God gets angry about, and, and, and the, these little things, these little inconveniences that, that we have. But all of our impatience is a fruit of being prideful. It's just, it's just really no way around it. It's just, that's the truth. There's really no way else other to describe it. See, a proud person cannot seem to wait for anything with an, with a proper attitude. A proud person just doesn't have that ability to wait for anything with having a, a healthy attitude. They just struggle so much with it. And in Romans chapter 12, verses three, it says, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed for to each of you. Now, here's a question. <clears throat> where does your confidence really come from? Where, where does your confidence really come from? Because if we're thinking of ourselves too highly, then the question I have to ask is, where does our confidence really come from? An argument can be made that when we are impatient much of the time, are we thinking too highly of ourselves? What is causing us to think too highly of ourselves? Prideful people often think so highly of themselves that they believe that they should never be inconvenienced in any way whatsoever, right? Wherever they go, they should never be inconvenienced. That's how prideful people think. That's how I think sometimes. Now, although we should not think badly about ourselves, we are also commanded to not think too highly of ourselves. Why? Why is that? Because a patient, humble person will display a right godly attitude towards God and to others, just like Jesus did. And that's something we have to do. That's something we have to learn, right? So when we think too highly of ourselves, we're not acting godly. We're not patient towards others. And we're not patient with God. Which leads us to number two. Examine if our expectations are realistic. I really like this one. For some of us, this is just a bingo. This, the, the light bulb should go off because some of us have faulty, false, wrong expectations of ourselves uh, and of others and of how the world works. Now, if we can admit that we are struggling with pride, then we are now open to correcting any false expectations that we may have. Now we should analyze those expectations, right? If we admit that we struggle with pride and we're humble to admit that, now we have to look at our expectations because Satan often gets us to set expectations that are too idealistic rather than realistic. Let me explain. If you get married, believing that your spouse will be perfect, loving you perfectly, knowing what you're thinking and feeling at all times, that's unrealistic right? If you're believing that your boss should word everything perfectly in emails, 
verbally and manage everything perfectly, that's unrealistic. If you believe that your sports team, like the Dodgers, should win every game and every World Series, that's unrealistic. If you believe that your kids, who are a representation of you in your minds, should do everything perfectly, which includes perfect grades, being a star athlete, getting that full ride scholarship, I'm sorry, but that's just unrealistic. If you believe all minimum low wage restaurant staff members should be providing top notch customer service to you, basically waiting on you hand and foot, I'm sorry, but that's just unrealistic. Because Satan loves to cloud our minds with these unrealistic expectations and it leads us to act impatiently towards others, which is a win for Satan. Here's my point. When we get in our heads that everything concerning us and our circumstances and our relationships should always be perfect, which means there's no inconveniences, no hindrances, right? No unlovely people to deal with. We're just kidding ourselves. We're just fooling ourselves and we're setting ourselves up for a fall. Now, let me just preface. It's okay to have expectations, but it's not okay to have unrealistic expectations, right? So let's look at John chapter 16, verse, uh, chapter, verse 33. It says, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration, but be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, certain, and undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Impatience is one area that seems to manifest when we are not yoked to Jesus. Because if you study Jesus, you'll know that he was never in a hurry. He was often interrupted, right? He was, oh, but he always made time for people, right? Jesus did not allow his to-do list or his agenda to keep him from being present to those who came across. He came across. As a matter of fact, Jesus had one of the biggest agendas in human history, right? And he fulfilled it. He conquered it for us, right? As it says in the underline there, he conquered it for us. He fulfilled his mission and he never rushed. He never was in a hurry. That's amazing, right? He did it with patience. He, pa he was patient and accepted the process. Patient for us when he was nailed on the cross for all of us because we put him there. So he always displayed patience. He always displayed patience. And we have to look at that and we have to model. That's a model for all of us to follow, which leads us to the third one. Patience is not your ability to wait, but your ability to maintain a good attitude while waiting. Let me repeat that one. Patience is not your ability to wait, but your ability to maintain a good attitude while waiting. It is this faithful, trusting, humble attitude that is the secret ingredient we need to endure during situations that others would most likely become impatient. It's the secret sauce of learning how to be patient in difficult times. It is accepting imperfections and inconveniences as pretty much happening every day, right? We just know it's gonna happen and we're prepared for them with the right attitude and the right perspective. It's letting go of our pride and our false expectations on the world around us and the people close to us and even ourselves. Now, I'm going to read to you this next verse really quick. Um, it says, <clears throat> I have told you these things so that in me that you have, okay, I think I read that one already, but let me read it again because I think it's really important that we understand. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have perfect peace and confidence. Do we want perfect peace and perfect confidence? Is that something we want, right? In the world, you will have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration. So, so we're being told in this verse in Colossians that it's inevitable. We're going to have frustrations. We're going to have distress. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, and undaunted. For I, Jesus, have overcome the world, right? That's what he's saying. He's overcome the world. I have deprived it from the power to harm you. We don't have to let the world harm us anymore. We don't. We don't have to get frustrated and impatient and have our stress levels and our cortisol levels go up like we talked about last week. We can choose to not do that. And we can recognize that Jesus has conquered the world. 
So I'm going to leave you with this final tool. Uh, this is from um, Mary Lou Kasky. She's an author, a speaker, and a, and a Christian coach. She came up with these self-reflection questions that I just wanted to leave with you. Um, so whenever you struggle with patience, you can ask yourselves these five questions. And they are, am I flexible, right? Am I being flexible? Or am I being too, too stubborn? Am I being too rigid? Am I trying to do everything by the book or, or not? I don't have any flexibility at all in this situation, right? Am I being realistic? Or is my expectations unrealistic? often idealistic, right? Am I letting go of control? Am I still trying to keep control over everything and, and just tight, have a tight grip over every area and every role in my life? Or am I surrendering that to God, especially when I don't have control? Am I being compassionate with somebody that's hurting, right? Hurt people hurt people, right? Am I being compassionate with that person? Or am I just taking their words at face value, right? Am I enjoying this moment right now? It, are you struggling even like at Disneyland or, or things where we should be enjoying the moment? Are we just stressing out all the time? Are we impatient over the little, little things and finding that one little thing to get angry about? Um, so these are five really important questions to really identify where we're struggling in that moment of impatience. So, so keep these, if you have your notes or if you wanna maybe save this or take a screenshot of this or write them down, these are really good questions that we can ask ourselves um, when it comes to impatience that we can help identify. So really what, what's going on in our minds that we, need to, that we need to surrender to God and maybe correct that thinking, so to speak. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this message. Thank you for teaching us about how to overcome patience. Uh, this is just the first half. I'm excited with what my mom is going to say. Um, Lord, you know, there's times where we become impatient, whether it be relational impatience, circumstantial impatience, financial impatience, um, or whatever it may be. Um, Lord, help us to really ask these questions of ourselves. Am I struggling with being, with not being flexible? Am I having expectations that are unrealistic? Um, am I trying to play God and, and, and take control of every area of my life uh, and the people in my life? Um, am I being compassionate with those around me? Um, am I simply not enjoying moments that I really should be enjoying? Or what is it? What am I struggling with? So identify, so point those out to me. Um, identify those areas. Help me to identify those areas so that I can work on those with you, Lord. And Lord, help me to remind me when I am impatient that it's not about me getting my way. It's not about me being right. It's not about me uh, getting the service that I believe I'm entitled to. It's simply about me being prideful. And that's something I have to remind myself of every time I'm impatient. Because Lord, you want to teach me not just to wait, but to, but to wait with a good attitude like Jesus did. And that's what I want. That's what I want to be. I want to be like Jesus. I don't want to be like this next impatient person that comes along that the world teaches. I don't want to be that. I want to be what you want me to be, Lord Jesus. So Lord, just be with us as we continue to have the onion, the onion layers peeled in this area. And I know it'll sting, but Lord, it's essential if we are going to grow in patience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.